In this video, we'll show you how you can use the dashboard layout for reporting purposes. To illustrate, we've created a dashboard for an internal IT department. It provides a full overview of all tickets received in 2023 related to both employee equipment and office equipment issues. This dashboard is designed for the department's leadership team. The dashboard allows users to view various metrics, the total number of tickets, the count of priority tickets, instances where the service level agreement or SLA was breached, and the average support rating provided by employees once their tickets were resolved and closed. This pie chart gives us an overview of ticket distribution by equipment category, while this bar chart shows which departments submit the most tickets. We've also got a line graph showing the variation in volume over the months. This timeline view makes it easy to see all the tickets and when they were submitted and resolved, grouped by department and colored by priority. Leadership can click on the individual tickets to learn more about a specific ticket. We've also added the ability to filter all our elements by priority level using this drop-down menu. Our goal is to ensure that our data tells a clear story and provides our leadership with the flexibility to access more information when needed. For instance, we've given them the option to click into the SLA breached number element to see the underlying ticket data, anticipating that this is an area leadership may want to investigate further. We've done the same for this bar chart showing ticket submission by department. This chart is grouped by equipment type and that makes it possible for users to quickly filter the underlying data by simply clicking directly on the grouping sections in the chart. Finally, we've given our leadership the option to print either the whole page or just individual charts. Let's take a look at how we've created this. First off, let's dive into the data layer to quickly familiarize ourselves with the data. This view is filtered to show all tickets received in 2023. For each ticket, We've gathered details like the problem description, priority level, the specific equipment involved, who submitted it, the department it came from, submission time stamp, the current status, and the date when the ticket was closed. We've also included the resolution notes provided by the IT assignee. Additionally, there's a formula at play calculating how many days the ticket resolution exceeded the service level agreement. To give us a sense of satisfaction, we've included a resolution rating submitted by the original employee. For good measure, there's also a lookup field indicating whether the equipment in question is employee assigned or office equipment. Now let's switch back to our interfaces and click on Edit to enter Creator Mode. In order to create the dashboard, we use the dashboard page layout. If we click Next, we can pick a table. And you can see in this preview that Airtable will pre-populate the page with a number element, displaying the total number of records. Additionally, there's a bar chart ready to go illustrating the distribution of tickets based on their priority level. Back to our current page. Before we've even clicked anything, you'll notice that we can adjust the page title in the Page Properties panel and decide whether users are permitted to print the page or not. Now, if we hover over the page and click, we can see that all our elements are grouped together. This action opens the Group Properties panel, revealing that we can modify the source for this group. Essentially, this means that all elements within this group share the same source. Not to worry, though, we have the flexibility to create multiple groups and incorporate various sources onto the same page. In the Appearance section, you get to choose the width of your group and decide whether or not to color the background. Moving on to filters, this feature enables you to apply a filter for the entire group. For instance, if we only want to focus on office equipment, we can add a condition to only show tickets where the equipment type is exactly office equipment, and it will impact all the elements within the group. This way, you can streamline your view to specific criteria effortlessly. Additionally, you have the option to incorporate tabs or dropdowns. These also affect all elements within the group. While we've already added one dropdown, let's also include one for equipment categories. This way, we can easily compare and contrast and understand the ticket volume for different categories of equipment. Each group comes with a title and a text paragraph element. 
These elements help us provide explanations to our leadership about what they are currently viewing. It adds a layer of clarity and context, ensuring a better understanding of the data presented on the dashboard. You will also see that we can add to group. If we click here, we can add a new number, charts, as well as a list view or a timeline view. We can click and drag elements around to rearrange them to our liking. If we click on an element and hover on the side, you'll spot a little plus sign. Clicking this will prompt Airtable to create a new element of the same type. Note that this only happens if there is room for a new element in the row. Additionally, you can click on the three dots in the top right corner and duplicate the element. This feature comes in handy when you want to use the same filters but make slight adjustments to a second element. Let's take a closer look at the number element. At the top, you can modify the title and provide it with a subtitle. The source is grayed out because it is determined at the group level. The filters section enables you to add conditions specific to this element. Under appearance, you have the option to choose whether you simply want to count the number of records that fit the applied filter or whether you want to summarize the records. For instance, in our number element displaying average ratings, we selected ticket resolution rating as our field and average as the summary type to obtain the average rating for all tickets. In the appearance section, you can also pick the color of your number, decide whether to have a background color or not, and determine if you want your collaborators to see the underlying records, in this case, tickets. This action opens a new side sheet where you can specify the data visible in a list view. Click the plus sign to add or create new fields. Additionally, you can toggle whether people can click into record details. This provides a versatile and detailed view for collaborators. The menu for charts follows a similar structure. At the top, you can select the chart type. For a pie chart, you can specify which field serves as your category and decide whether you want to look at a count or a summary. In the case of bar, line, and scatter charts, you have similar options for the x-axis and y-axis, with the added flexibility to group by another field when using the count type in the y-axis. When utilizing a date field, you gain the option to bucket by a specific time period. We've done this for our volume by month line chart. Under appearance, you have the option to choose whether the chart should be small, medium, or large, affecting all elements on the same row. This option is also available for list and timeline views. To create a new group, hover below your existing group and click Add Group. This allows you to add a group from a different table, providing it with a heading and a text paragraph. Hopefully, this overview has given you some inspiration for how you can leverage the dashboard layout for your own workflows. Happy dashboarding!